Pet Miller, and uh, she will be singing later on in the service. It's going to be a beautiful song. We're looking forward to having her. Always good to have you. I was telling you before service, we know you as KD, which is Ken's daughter, but uh, but it's Kim. All right. All right. The Albrights are coming with our uh, Advent Candle of Joy this morning. microphone is there. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah in the days of Herod the king behold there came wise men from the east of from east to Jerusalem saying where is he that is king is born king of the Jews for we have seen his star and um, in the east and are come to worship him then Herod when he had privately called the wise men inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared and he sent them to Bethlehem and said go and search diligently for the young child and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, 7 through 11. Let's pray. As we light the candle of joy, we remember wise men everywhere that celebrate with joy after receiving the light of the world. Jesus our Messiah as Savior and Lord. On this earth we celebrate with the citizens of heaven the joy of God's redemption. Amen. Thank you so much. Guys. Rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing ye dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy.
please, and let's join together in prayer today as we open this morning of worship to our Lord. Father, we love you and we thank you for your peace. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for the hope that you bring in coming to this world. We acknowledge today that we do not have the answers or the solutions for the world. Only you, God. We lean on you. We depend upon you and we expect to receive from you today. So God, as we worship you in spirit and in truth, I pray, God, that you would reach down and you would touch us and change us forever. So our motive is on you. I pray that you would be blessed by our love, our appreciation, and our joy today as we worship you in Jesus' name. God's children said, Amen. Amen. Remain standing. Let's sing to the Lord. Brother Paul. Let's sing this beautiful Christmas hymn, What Child Is This? <clears throat> what child is this to lay to rest? On Mary's lap is sleeping, who angels greet with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch for keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels see. The babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean a state where us and us are feeding? Good Christian, fear for sinners here. The silent word is beating. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him life, the babe, the son of man. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the king. Whom shepherds God and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels sing. In your hymnals, page 578, or follow with us on the screen as we read the Word of God together. This is entitled, The Adoration of the Magi. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least of the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem, and he said, 
Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. When they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Remain standing. Let's continue to sing. <coughs> Let's worship the Lamb of Glory. Y'all ready? I'm going to lead you through this with a guitar. We're going to start off kind of slow, and then we're going to speed up, and then we're going to slow down again. Stay with me. the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King of kings. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King of kings. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King. And with our hands lifted high, we will worship and see. With our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With hands lifted high to the sky, when the world wonders why, we'll just tell them we're loving our King. And with our hands lifted high, we will worship and sing. With our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, when the world wonders why, we'll just tell them we're loving our King. Oh, we'll just tell them we're loving our King. Oh, yes, we'll just tell them we're loving our King. Here we go. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King of kings. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King of kings. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King. And with our hands lifted high, we will worship and see. With our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, when the world wonders why. Just to heaven we're loving our King. And with our hands lifted high, we will worship and see. With our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, when the world wonders why. Just to heaven we're loving our King. 
Oh, we'll just tell them we're loving our King. Oh, yes, we'll just tell them we're loving our King. Let's lift it up now. Here we go. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King of kings. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King of kings. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King. And with our hands lifted high, we will worship and sing. With our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, when the world wonders why. Just tell them we're loving our King. And with our hands lifted high, we will worship and sing. With our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, when the world wonders why. Just tell them we're loving our King. Oh, we'll just tell them we're loving our King. Oh, yes, we'll just tell them we're loving our King. God Almighty, last time, we will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King of kings. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King. Oh, we will worship. We will worship the King. Oh, yes, we will worship. We will worship the King. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look around, find someone, make yourself friendly in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Ushers, if you take your places, we will receive our morning tithes and offering. Ushers, if you take your places at this time, we'll continue with our worship service. 
this Saturday night at 6 o'clock, I would encourage you, you're usually very good about attending our Christmas Eve services. Uh, it's always beautiful in here. Uh, Brother Joseph's going to be doing something special with music and lights. Uh, of course, there will be candlelight, and it's going to be a beautiful service with uh, beautiful music. And I would encourage you to come with communion, and it's a great way to uh, start your Christmas season. My family, uh, we always, Christmas Eve is our time, and uh, we didn't really uh, attend Christmas Eve services until we started coming here, because that was when we were opening presents and enjoying our family time. But uh, we have put ours, we've moved our, our celebration at home back because of the service, and it's always been wonderful and beautiful. So I want to encourage you, bring your friend, come on out, it'll be beautiful here, and you'll be glad you came. Let's ask the Lord to bless this offering. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to give to your work. I ask God that you'd bless the gift and the giver this morning as we continue to give to you. Continue, Lord, please, to use us and make available to us opportunities to be your arms outstretched to our community and the world. In Jesus' name, amen. God from whom all blessings flow, praise Him, all creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly hosts, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Before our children come up, uh, Seth and Casey are here this morning with Anna Lee. Guys, if you got some pictures there, if you can't see her really good. Oh, did he just step out? Did he really? Okay. Well, I saw he had the finger in the mouth thing going on there, but these are some of the pictures. But um, we, all right. Well, maybe she'll be ready to go a little later. You'll see before. Actually, this picture here was this morning. Yeah. I went and caught her, caught her this morning before I left. But uh, it's good to have them. Good to have Anna Lee. And we're just having a great time. Uh, to you that don't realize this, and your grandparents, I just want you to know that I'm really enjoying being a grandparent. It's a really, really cool thing, you know. It's a great, great experience. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Our children's message at this time. Kids, would you please come? And here comes Shirley with the kids, the children. By the way, uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, uh, we have some special... Uh, gifts for everybody uh, at each service. So uh, no matter which service or both service, if you come both, you get double. A different thing each service. So we will encourage you to come. Good morning. A few more here. Come over close. Come over real close. Y'all know I like Rudy being close and comfortable with me here. All right. We've been studying the last few weeks about some things that happened before Jesus was born, right? I gave y'all some candles a couple of weeks ago and last week you got a Christmas ornament of an angel and this week we're going to talk about somebody else that came at Christmas time when Jesus was born but I've got some good job 
I've got some questions to ask y'all first. I know y'all get lots of presents and things for Christmas, right? Do any of you get any pets? Any puppy dogs or rabbits or anything like that? No. Do you have any at your house already? Do you have a dog? I okay. have two You have two puppies? You have what? My friend has a bunny. A bunny? That's a good thing. Carlos, do you have a dog? Kelly, do y'all have any pets at your house? Two dogs? What do y'all have to do with these animals? You have to take care of them. And taking care of them is more than just playing with them when, and making them rowdy, right? You have to feed them. You have to water them. You have to take them outside to poop sometimes. That's the real fun thing. Yeah. Have any of you raised any animals for the fair yet? Kelly raised some bunnies. They were a lot of work, weren't they? You had to take care of them every day, even when it was cold like today, even when it was really, really hot like in the middle of the summertime. All the time. Bunny rabbits get kind of stinky, don't they? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot of work to take care of, of animals. And back in the time of Jesus, there were, there were people that took care of all the animals there. What are the people who take care of animals like Mr. Barney takes care of his cows and, and Andrew takes care of his cows and some people have horses? They're called farmers and ranchers today, right? But back in Jesus' day, there was a very special group of people called shepherds. And the shepherds had one job. You know what that job was? To take care of the lambs. To take care of the lambs. Do you know why the lambs were so special? Oh, wow, looky here. Who's come to see us? Reading from the book of Luke, chapter 2, it says, Out on the hills above Bethlehem, shepherds were looking after their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, there was a dazzling blaze of light in the sky above them. The shepherds were terrified. They had to cover their eyes. Whatever could it be? Then the angel of the Lord appeared and spoke to the shepherds. Remember last week, what did I tell you an angel was? A messenger from God? Yes. The angel said, Do not be afraid. I come with good news, which will bring you great joy to all people. God's promised king, your savior, has been born in Bethlehem today. Go now and look for the baby. You will find him asleep and lying in a manger. A huge crowd of angels appeared in the sky, singing, Praise be to God and peace to everyone on earth. And do you know when the angels went and found baby Jesus in the manger? Just like we read in the verse a while ago, it said that they stood watch over him. They protected him just like they protect their sheep. Just like Jesus is our shepherd and he protects us because we're, we're his sheep. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's say a prayer. Father God, thank you for bringing Jesus to be our Savior, to be our shepherd, to protect us, to care for us, to... Um, allow our flock, his flock, to be um, the, the, the people that Jesus so much wants us to be. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today, for bringing these children before Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Congregation, would you stand? Come and stand right on these steps. Thank you, Shepherd. Thank you, Shirley. And join us, sweetie. <laughs> She's going to stay right there. Stretch your right hand and promise out for these kids. Let's give them a good Christmas blessing. Father, I ask that your joy, your peace, God, your hope will always be these good, good kids. Father, I ask that you would touch them, that you would bless them. I ask, God, that you'd keep them safe and heal them when they get sick, God. I pray that in the nighttime when they're afraid, that you would just let them feel your presence, that 
you're ever with them, God, and you're never, ever going to leave them. And I pray, God, when Christmas morning comes around on Christmas Eve, that that joy they experience in that moment will continue as they grow older and older, Father. That they'll never lose the joy of Christmas. No matter what this world will throw at them, their joy will remain full. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless them and thank you for them. In Jesus' name, God's children said, Amen. All right. Thanks, kids. Got something for you now and later. All ready? All right. All righty. Today I'm talking about, as we talked about this morning, the candle joy. I want to talk about joy today. But before I do, <laughs> Kim, I'm telling you, I was ready to go. I was fired up. The cylinders were hot. I was ready to, to, to start going. It is, it is a joy to have Kim with us today. I actually heard her sing uh, on Facebook and absolutely enjoyed it and loved it. Not putting any pressure on you. Uh, but, but you just get up there and sing from your heart to the Lord and we'll just enjoy with you what God has given you. I want to thank you for allowing me to be here. Absolutely. Up here. Um, I know that as a pastor you have to, uh, you know, be very protective of, of this area. So I thank you for allowing me to be here. And um, thank you to all of you for making me feel very welcome from day one. I think this is my fourth or fifth time here. So um, I definitely feel like I'm at home. And so I'm not too, too nervous. <laughs> But um, And I just want to give God the glory because the song that I'm going to sing, I, you guys have hit on everything that's in this song. seem to be as dark as usual The stars seem brighter than they've been before And deep within I feel my soul is stirring As though my hope has been restored The shepherds say they've heard the voice of angels Confirming rumors spread across the land That a child protected well from Herod's anger Is our Father's Son and the Son of Man Love is raining down on the world tonight There's a presence here I can tell God is in us, God is for us God is with us here, Emmanuel. He's the Savior we have been praying for. In our humble hearts, He will dwell. God is in us. God is for us. God is with us here, Emmanuel. compelled to tell all who will listen that peace on earth is not so out of reach if we can find grace mercy and forgiveness he has come to save he is all of these love is raining down on the world tonight there's a presence here I can God is in us, God is for us, God is with us here, Emmanuel. He's the Savior we have been praying for, in our humble hearts He will dwell. God is in us, God is for us, God is with us here, Emmanuel. Love is 
raining down on the world tonight. There's a presence here I can tell. God is in us. God is for us. God is with us here, Emmanuel. Love is raining down on the world tonight. There's a presence here I can tell. God is in us, God is for us, God is with us here, Emmanuel. He's the Savior we have been praying for, in our humble hearts He will dwell. God is in us, God is for us, God is with us. You're the Savior we have been praying for, in our humble heart you will dwell. You are in us. You are for us. You are with us. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. That's right, my buddy. <laughs> yeah, so from now on, every time you come, you're going to have to sing. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry it took us four, four times. <laughs> I don't think we knew the first couple of times. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, when she was singing, I was thinking of, of what has been given to us and what we're doing with what has been given to us. Back in the days when he first came to the earth, I mean, people were looking for a Savior. They were looking for Messiah. And he had come. But what have we done since then? I mean, what are we doing now? The gift that has been given us, it's not enough to me for you to just go to heaven. We've got to do something with what has been given to us. You should be an agent of change everywhere you go. You should affect every room you walk into. And you don't have to be able to sing like him to do that. And I believe that when he brought joy into the world, we don't have any excuses to do anything but bring power to every place we walk into. If you are around people at your work day, you'll see that joy is not a common thing. And when you walk in with joy, when you walk in with power, I believe that joy is power. You change things. They may not say nothing, but they'll look at you and wonder, what's her deal? What's his thing? What's going on there? If you can make them think you have succeeded. But we are people of joy. We are people of hope. We are people of peace. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy. For all the people. We have great joy. Amongst us. In us. He's not in heaven just looking around. He's in us. He's here with us. And if he indeed is in and with us. We should be people of joy. We should be people that. And aren't afraid to be kind and gentle. And soft. There's a strength in that. Any weakling can fly off the handle. Any weakling can lose his cool or get mad with anybody else. That's natural. But it is supernatural. When you walk around with an aura of joy and a strange peace that people don't understand. I've got some images here that speak to joy. This this first one here. Now, a lot of people don't ever get past that stage. That, By the way, that is one of the many faces of Annie Lee Rose. It's hard to believe that some of the other pictures that that's her, but that's the way some people strike me, you know? I mean, you're wondering, what's their deal? Where are they coming from, you know? But it doesn't end that way. There are, there are, There's joy that follows every crisis you ever go through. Now, she's not going through crisis. This is the same baby. It's amazing. Same little girl. 
And she's begun to do this, and it is just great. Where does this come from? This comes from heaven. All babies don't come out of the womb smiling and, and everything. They, they, they move into it as their personality begins to develop. And this is what the Lord wants to see from us. This is the kind of joy you should bring to every room. Because when people see that, they say, they've got a secret that I need to have. Because there's not a lot to be joyful about in this world anymore. As a matter of fact, this is this next image. This, this is what a lot of us turn into right here. I mean, honestly, you don't have to get people to say, act like it. It's just a natural disposition of a lot of people right there. We need to move from that to joy. Go back to the, the, the smiling Annalise. That's what we needed to move. Interchange them right quick, back and forth, okay? This is what we needed to, to move from into this, right? And it can be done. It's not difficult. It's not impossible. God's kingdom is a kingdom of peace and joy. We talk about God's kingdom. We live amongst a, a, a people that, that is not, you know, the, 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 the modus operandi, the MO. But in God's kingdom, joy is a staple. In Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You see... I don't believe that we should learn the earth's language. We need to learn heaven's language. And heaven's culture is joy. In the middle of your trouble, in the middle of stress and pressure, it's joy. And we need to capture that. And we capture that by faith. Because believers know something that unbelievers do not know. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. You see, we're all Sooners. We're Christmas Eivers. The Johnson family, we don't wait till Christmas morning. We do stockings on Christmas morning. And that's sort of a an afterglow of all the heavy artillery on Christmas Eve. But I think all Christians should be Christmas Eivers. Don't wait till you see it. Don't wait till till it, it, it all ends. Enjoy it now. Receive it and accept it by faith. Jesus said, Thomas, it's good that you believe after seeing. But Thomas, listen, blessed are those who don't see, yet they believe. That's who we are. And that's the secret to our joy is that we behave as if we have already attained what has been promised to us in our faith. Believing brings us to knowing, and knowing brings us to joy. You have to be a person of faith. There are people out there that don't believe, my friend. I, I was talking with this with, with one of my boys recently about, about faith and, and how that a lot of people, there, there's a lot of unbelievers out there. You'd be shocked. A lot of people that if you were to ask them, get down point blank with them and say, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life? Do you believe that he's the only way to God? See, the more specific you get, the colder their feet get become. Because we believe that he is who he said he was. We believe that he is the salvation of the world and the only way to God. We believe that he died for our sins. And because we believe this... We know that our souls are saved. We know that we have a promise because believing brings us to knowing and knowing brings us to joy. John chapter 6, we're going to go through a battery of scriptures here. John chapter 6 and verse 47. Verily, verily, Jesus says, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Now, friend, that's not an if statement. That is a statement of fact he is making. If you believe in me, you have everlasting life. The next scripture, Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. The Spirit, God's Spirit Himself, testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Then we go to John chapter 5 and verse 24. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life. Before I accepted Christ, I was all about death. I didn't know it, didn't realize it. 
I didn't even feel it. But I was in death. But when I believed in Christ and accepted and received Him as Lord and Savior, I moved to life. 1 John chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. God wants to assure you. He wants to settle your heart and spirit. You know, when you begin to ask the question, do you believe? You get some answers, boy. And listen, you get more and more specific. The enemy has so infiltrated this world that he begins to lay parameters down. Do you believe in God? Yeah, that's okay. The enemy does not mind at all if you believe in God. It's all right. All right. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. And I'm going to tell you, the enemy is not that. Okay, you can believe in Christ. But here is when it comes. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to God? Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. There are many ways to God. See, we're all open-minded here. We're not closed-minded bigots. We, we keep our minds open. There are many ways. This is what the enemy has taught, and this is what our world has received. I'm going to tell you something, friend. Jesus Christ is the only hope that you have. He is the only hope for your family. That precious little baby that, that Seth has back in the nursery right now, he is the only hope for Anna Lee. Only hope. There is no other way to God but through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And do we believe this? Yes, we believe this. And because we believe this, I know without a shadow of a doubt that He is in my heart and He is in, he is in my life. When I was saved, when I came and knelt down at a living room couch with my father, Dad asked me after I'd read, read the scriptures with him, I'd repeated the prayer and everything. He said, David, he said, Where's Jesus? I said, well, he's in heaven. He said, David, Revelation 3.20 says, if Jesus knocks and any man hears that voice, he said, have you heard a voice? Have you felt that God's speaking to you? I said, yes, Dad, I have, that he's drawing me toward him. Okay. It says, if you open that door, that he will come in and sup with you and you with him. He said, David, that's the door of your heart. I said, okay, Dad. He said, now, did you believe? Did you, are you, were you serious when you prayed? I said, yes, Dad. He said, David, according to God's word, you believe God's word to be true? Yes, Dad, I do. You believe it's the truth? Yes, I do, Dad. Then, David, according to God's word, where is Jesus right now? I said, He's in my heart. And in that moment, where that my faith was activated as an eight-year-old child, I was capable of receiving Christ and understanding that fact with my faith in my heart. And when I said heart, before I finished the, 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 the enunciation of the T of heart, I felt an overwhelming joy. What is joy? It is that secret of the kingdom. It is that culture and that language of the kingdom. And that love just began to flow into my heart. And I knew in that moment, nobody could say anything to me ever. And has it been since then? It was, let me see if I'm 50. That was 50 years ago. And I have remained very strong in that faith. Because I know that I know that I know that Jesus Christ is in my heart. You know why? Because I'm a believer. Dallas Home. How many remember Dallas Home? Yeah? No? Yeah, there you go, brother. Dallas Home was a, uh, a Christian singer back in the 70s, and he sang a song, Hey, I'm a believer now, since Jesus came in my heart, or something like that. But that, that has always stayed with me. Hey, I'm a believer now. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And I believe that He's the only way. I'm an extreme believer. How many of you with me? You say, brother, I'm an extreme believer. Extremism is not a bad word, my friend. As long as you're extreme for Christ, be extreme for God. I'm an extremist when it comes to believing that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. So my question to you today, are you a believer today? That's the big question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? Do you believe He lived a, a, sin, a sinless life? Do you believe that He died on a cross for your sins and rose again the third day? And ever sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and me right now. Do you believe this? He is the hope of the world. Stand with me, please. I'm not finished. Some of you are going, oh, hallelujah. No, I'm not finished. <laughs> I, won't, I won't be long. <clears throat> but I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I didn't put this on the screen because I want your eyes closed. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Many of you have done this and you feel safe and that's okay. But I want to encourage you to, when you pray this, believe 
and trust God. Repeat with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I believe you sent your son to this earth to die for my sins and to pay my sin penalty. I believe you are my only, my only hope. I accept your sacrifice and I repent of my sins. Here we go. Come into my heart right now and change my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I ask you a question. Answer me together. Where is Jesus right now? In my heart. You may be seated. <laughs> Revelation chapter 3.20. This is what Dad brought to me. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice and opens that door, I will come into him. I, I might come into him. No, it's not there. I will come into him. And will sup with him and he with me. <laughs> the king of glory. The salvation of the world knows me. He knows my name. And he comes into my heart and he speaks with me. He fellowships with me. I was watching you as I do every Sunday, our fellowship time. Stand up, shake somebody's hand, make, make yourself friendly in Jesus' name. And then, then you go. And you get louder and you get louder and stuff and... You just carry on. And I begin to think of how the Lord longs for us to do that. Imagine we said, but you know what? Instead of shaking each other's hands, I, would, I just want you to just take that energy, take that relationship, take that conversation, and just give it to God right now. <laughs> I'll tell you something, friend. That's a, great, that's a great, great moment. When people begin to talk to the Lord as they talk to each other. Because we believe that He's with us and He hears us. When I was a child... <clears throat> and VBS, how many of you have ever heard the song, Into My Heart, Into My Heart? Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I think we have the words, into my heart. If you know it, come on. Into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Paul, I should have given that to you for the closer, brother. <laughs> That's a good song. And I sung that as a child, and I still repeat it as an adult. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. You see, there's a lot of people there that you work with. There's people in our county, in our city, wherever your county or city that you work. They don't believe, friend. They have a partial faith. But it's not a faith that will get them to heaven. They don't believe. I've talked to some people that says, I don't believe. Last year at our Christmas trip, I purposely picked a fellow that didn't believe in God to drive us. I did. He's an atheist. I love him. He's a friend of mine. Uh, I was with him this past weekend. Chatted with him a little bit. When we came time to pray, who was at my table at, at uh, Papa Do's? You'll remember this. I know you were there, Debbie. We were sitting there, and I said, you already pray? We prayed. They went to take his hand. He says, I don't, I don't pray. You remember that? remember that? Lots of people out there. They don't believe. And you say, why would you bring an atheist to our... Why, why do you think I'd bring an atheist to our Christmas trip? I want to share with him the love of Jesus. We tipped him well. We loved him. We fed him. We had a great time with him. And he's a great guy, but he's without Christ. And he has the same capacity to believe that I do. It doesn't matter that he's from Europe. It doesn't matter that he grew up in a godless society. His soul longs for God as much as my soul longs for God. David said, as the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul longs for you, God. And I know my friend's soul wants to just break out in joy before its creator, God. And the more and more we can expose that joy and that love to people that need that joy and love. My friend, you need to share the joy that God's given you. You need to share the joy which is the culture of heaven. If you were to die right now, you can ask people, where would you go? If they hesitate, if they hesitate, you need to start speaking to them about the joy of God and the assurance of salvation. But things aren't going well for me, Brother David. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Now look, this isn't Christianity 101. This is advanced. 
This is for mature people. If you're mature, just cover your eyes. All right? If you want to grow up, keep reading. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know, you know that that testing of your faith produces perseverance. And there's another scripture that says that weeping lasts for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 6. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion or people of the church. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. You see, the Christian culture is a culture of peace and it's a culture of joy. You need to acclimate yourself to heaven. Acclimate yourself to the behavior and the culture of heaven. Because it's who we are. We need to live this. We need to be useful to God. It's not enough for you to just make it to heaven. You need to take people with you. You need you, When people stand over your gravestone, that's going to happen. It's going to happen to mine too. And they're looking at your gravestone. You need to look at that gravestone and you need to say, Boy, she made a big difference. She mattered in this world. She shared the love of Christ. Even though, even though things didn't always go well for him, he always had joy because he lived with one foot in heaven and one foot on this earth. Now he's got both feet in heaven. Christian culture is that peace and joy. God's entrance into this world has brought joy into this world. The angel said it. The shepherd said it. It is a fact. You are saved from destruction now. And you will live on. How are you going to live? We might as well live in joy. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. In the King James Version says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. This is that supernatural peace. Shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is how we cope. The peace of God surrounds us. God's arms have already enveloped us in his acceptance of our, of our repentance. And then he brings us into a nation, a kingdom of joy. And this is where we make a difference. This is where we help people. We help people that weren't privileged with the same parents that we had. Parents like yours and mine and Annalise that bring us to church and expose us to the gospel and the only hope of the world. We're to make a difference. We're to matter. We're to spread this culture of hope, this culture of peace, this culture of joy. It is supernatural. I used to think that in order to be supernatural, you had to go around and heal people, cast demons out. I believe in all those things. Raise the dead, cause finances to flow. But my friend, if you'll ever learn the secret of peace, hope, and joy. The Bible says the world looks for a sign. But my friend, we have a secret super weapon. We have a weapon of mass destruction that can take an entire city for Christ. If you walk around with peace, hope, and joy in your heart, and you share it with confidence, and you boldly ask some people. I told Matthew the other day, I said, ask some people at work. Do you believe in God? And when they say, well, yeah, yeah, I believe in God. And then say, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the hope of the world and the only hope of the world? My friend, you become confrontational when you do that. You confront them with truth. You confront them with peace. You confront them with hope and with joy. If you'll just do that, you can make a difference. You say, well, I didn't feel anything. I don't know. But look, when you leave and you go home and you're having dinner, they're still thinking. Your mind is settled, but their mind is being confronted by their own soul that is longing for God. You see, evangelism is not as hard as we've made it out to be. Oh, you've got to read this book. You've got to do this and this. Read that. Read, read John. Uh, read, read, read the book of Jude. Read, 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 read and Memorize this. And da, 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 da. Listen. You just confront their soul. Confront their spirit with the hope and the joy and the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you become a powerful person. You may never see the change. You may never see the end result. 
But my friend, God is working together for your good. I think Kim and Ken would both attest to this. I believe Kim was probably following the Lord before Ken was. Is that right? Okay. She had no idea. She didn't know about Ken. But you know what? God was working. God knew Ken was there. God knew it. So God began to expose Ken to the right people in the right way. And Ken had the character to say, you know what? I don't have all the answers. It's time for me to take care of some business. And he did. God is already working outside of what you're doing. But when you turn on the power of a testimony, of an expression, sometimes if we just give a good expression, we'll baffle people. And what I mean by a smile, you know, Brother Miller used to say, if you're happy, notify your face. You know, we need to be willing to smile every now and then. Make them wonder, but have joy. I want you to stand with me, please. This time we are concluding. I want you to make an activation proclamation. Let's repeat this together, and I want you to repeat it with faith and determination. You ready? Heavenly Father, thank you for salvation. I believe in you. I receive your gift of eternal life. I confess you as Savior of the world and of my soul. I will live for you with joy. I will represent you with peace. I am yours, and you are mine. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Remain standing. Put that last scripture up for me. I want to read this over you. In Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive that in Jesus' name. Brother Paul, come out and take us out, my brother. Amen. And Seth, Casey, and Annalie, if y'all would meet me in the foyer, I'd appreciate it. Rhonda? Still thinking about the power that is in all of the believers? God's Word says that the same power that rose Christ from the grave lives in every believer. It's in each and every one of us. That's what this song is about. Sing it with me. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave The same power that commands the dead to wake Lives in us, lives in us The same power that moves mountains when He speaks The same power that can calm our raging sea Lives in us lives in us he lives in us lives in us again the same power that rose jesus from the grave the same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us lives in us the same power that moves mountains when he speaks the same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us, lives in us. He lives in us, lives in us. He lives in us, lives in us. Yeah. Now take that power and share it. It's alive in you. Don't squelch it in the name of Jesus. Amen? Go and spread some joy. Share some joy. Baffle some folks. Make them wonder what in the world's wrong and when they, or, or right about you. And when they come and ask you, tell them. Just tell them. Amen? God bless you. Go with God in the power of His might. You may be seated. And elders, a brief meeting after service. We will not be long.